Hey, so every now and then we kind of get to bring you a little secret, things I'm really excited to share with you. Can you guess what's inside this box? Well, it's a computer case. The new IQ Elite Capellix RGB AIO from Corsair features a split copper cold plate for optimal efficiency and cooling. The low noise centrifugal pump delivers a flow rate of up to 0.82 liters per minute while generating less than 20 dB of noise. The included IQ Commander Core turns any case into a smart case allowing for fan, pump, and RGB control all through your AIO. To learn more about the Elite Capellix AIO from Corsair, click the link in the description below. So this is the Akasa? Is the name of the brand? Akasa? The, okay, so I don't have much information about this. This was actually sent over uh, to me by Hank at Performance PCs. He's like, hey, you like small form factor stuff, right? And I'm like, sure. So he's like, you need to check this out. This is the Akasa A-ITX48-M1B. I don't know much about it. As you can see, it's, it's just kind of a brown box deal that once you open it up, you can see it's a pretty, pretty cool little case. So this is interesting. And what caught my attention about this case, the case is the cooler. <gasps> this isn't the first time we've seen this concept of turning the chassis into the heat sink, but this is gonna be the first time we've looked at one around here. This is extremely small. I, if I had to guess, it's only a, a couple of liters of volume, maybe, I wanna say two and a half liters if that, because you can see how much the heat sink is extended. So the case really only goes from here to here, right? So I think two and a half liters would be generous in terms of size. We'll open this up in a second. For those of you that are freaking out, it wasn't actually in the box when I slammed it on the table. Okay, it was an Allen two pot just to give it the weight. And that's why it bounced the whole table off the ground. Shh, don't tell them. Uh, trade secret. This is not designed for a discrete GPU. So already if you're looking at building this super small form factor gaming PC, unless you do some crazy mods, this is not it, Chief. The Akasa 150 watt AC to DC adapter with four pin power den. It's basically a laptop power cable <laughs> that is, con is like terminated to this plug. And then that goes into this dealy bob. Oh, they're so ugly. Oh well, that's fine. <laughs> the charging brick plugs into here, and then this converts it to three or one, two SATA, one Molex. Oh, the 24 pin is actually, a, okay, I was like, where's the 24 pin? And then you've got your single eight pin EPS, which is split, that it could be two, uh, a four pin if it needs it. So the crazy part about this though, is the cooler. Because again, you're basically attaching your computer, your, your CPU and your motherboard to the cooler. And you get to build it. Oh, this is gonna be fun. I haven't even looked at the instructions yet. So anyway, it gives you, as you can see, your mounting plates. Looks like we got AMD right there. You've got your Intel. We've got a mounting bracket right here. This is gonna be for your hard drives right here. Um, don't know yet what we're gonna do for storage, but check this out. You even, get to, you even get to mount the heat pipes yourself. Be careful with these. So I definitely need to pay attention to the manual. They give you two zip ties, which I think is two, that's funny. Um, and then you've got your mounting plate, your uh, thermal grease and all that sort of stuff. So you can see that you actually are gonna have to slide the heat pipes into there. This appears to just be a single piece of like billet aluminum. So in terms of heat transfer, I'm really curious. I mean, again, because you're limited to 150 watts, you can only do so much. It looks like you're gonna have to use some high thermal conductivity compound. Okay, so I'm assuming that's gonna be for in here on our heat pipes, because you have to transfer the heat from the block to the pipe, obviously. We've got some little machined mounting things, which is obviously gonna be to the side of the case, I'm sure. You probably are gonna have to use thermal grease also from this to the case, because again, anywhere you have metal contacting, you need some sort of a thermal conductivity uh, compound in there. You got your screws, and then you got little standoffs and uh, screws right there. So that's everything that comes in the package. Let's show you what we plan on putting in it. So this is an entire computer right here. This is what we're putting in there. So I've got a HyperX Savage 980 gigabyte or 960 gigabyte SATA SSD that we're gonna put in here. Mostly because I'm not sure if this board even has an M.2 slot on it to be honest. I'll double check in a second. But this is not using PCIe Gen 4 or anything like that. Um, and I've got it and I wanna use it because it's not doing anything but sitting in a box. 16 gigabytes of Patriot uh, Viper 
DDR4 with RGB, just because again, um, not going crazy high end on this, but that's good RAM regardless. I'm going with the APU. This is the AMD Ryzen 3400G. I've got some complaints about this CPU, but it really is the best that we could possibly do for this build that still would allow us to do any sort of gaming with the power limitations that we have with this power brick. The 3400G, it's literally a bastard. It doesn't truly belong to any family. It's not a 3000 series CPU, even though it says 3400G, because it's still Zen 1.5. It's based on 2000 series CPUs. And as much as we've been begging and pleading with AMD to please come out with an RDNA 1 based APU, this is still running the crappy Vega graphics. But it's still better than anything Intel has to offer uh, on desktop APUs. Yes, I know they got the XE graphics coming out. That's still only based on GPU or uh, laptops right now. And this definitely predates that by a couple of years. So it's still gonna allow us to do some 1080p medium to low setting gaming, uh, half-life, stuff like that. And it will do 4K playback, obviously, with no problem. The motherboard we're using for this is an updated AB350M gaming Wi-Fi from Gigabyte. I do have a nicer uh, motherboard that I could use for this. The problem is it's DTX. That's that Asus um, crosshair impact thing. It's too long. It's not a true ITX, it's longer, so it will not fit in this chassis. If I take a look at this motherboard, I cannot remember if it has an M.2 slot. Oh, it's on the back. I wouldn't want to do that because just sandwiching it down there on a system that's gonna be passively cooled might not be a good idea. But what I love about this, that's the computer and that can actually play games. In fact, let me show you how fast you can build this computer. We'll do it in real time. Bail. But Jay, there's no cooler. I know, we're doing it right now. <laughs> well, so let's go ahead and take a look at inside the chassis, because I think Obviously, this is where I think, I think people are gonna get really excited because it's all milled. The build quality of this is quite intense in terms of, it's beefy, it really, really is. So remember, like I said, everything that hangs off the side right here, yeah, it's loose, I just unbolted it, that's why it's making that sound. This is all heat sink. This is the case right there. So, this is the only ventilation that's on the top. And there's a little bit on the bar. Jeez, that's so heavy. Phil, stick out your hand. I'm gonna drop it. Oh, it's too big. It's too big. Lady. <laughs> you could go with a super low profile, like Noctua cooler in here, one of those low profile uh, horizontal ones. I do not recommend that because there's no case airflow. There is nothing bringing fresh air in or exhausting the hot air out. A low watt part like we're using right here and a low, low energy, not gonna make a lot of heat, should be just fine given the volume of this metal that's gonna be sinking into the cooler. Under gaming, we'll be testing that too under the 3400G to see if we get any sort of thermal throttling and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and just plop the parts in there and then we'll figure out how the heck this cooler goes together. Cause I kind of looked at the instructions and I was kind of like, So we came across our first problem here. One, the RAM is so close, and this is gonna be the same spot RAM always is on an ITX case or motherboard. And it's so close to these USB 3.0s, I've gotta put a hell of a bend in there to make them go up and over the RAM. But because I'm using a little bit taller than standard RAM because of the cooler, it means my USB 3.0 doesn't reach now to over here where it has to go. So I'm gonna now try switching this out, and I swear, Patriot did not sponsor today's video, but here's what sucks about this RAM though. It's only 2,400 and we know we need faster RAM. We need at least 3,000 RAM because of uh, this being an APU. So I was gonna put in these standard like Patriot, like budget kits, the signature series. I think I'm gonna do the crucial ballistics that I have. Um, the, the cheaper stuff is also 2,400. It is what it is, guys. 
I don't, it's like they don't make high speed RAM with little bitty heat sinks. It won't reach. Bad design, bad design. So since I can't fit it anyway, you might as well put the Viper back in. So they need to extend this by like, what? Two centimeters would be more than enough. But I just think it's funny that they, they didn't think about that. Did they build a computer in this thing or did they only do it via CAD? Because they would have noticed this immediately had they actually built in this. Yeah, and same thing goes with the front panel connectors too, right? So this is the front panel connector here. It's sort of routed around like that, but I gotta make sure it doesn't interfere with the heat pipes. Like they can still make their turn. The heat pipes are gonna go right over top of the SATA. So hopefully I'll be able to plug in my drive. <laughs> it's like the more we build this, the less amazing it seems, <laughs> I guess, whatever. What's the problem right there? It's covering the 24 pin. I gotta move them. So that's what it looks like put together. Looks exactly like it did before I opened it up. Oh, it has some blinky lights and stuff. And without the front USB connected, because we already showed you that stupidly they didn't give you enough length to be able to plug it in based on different ITX layouts. That's okay, everything we're doing is plugged into the back anyway. So I'm opening up Ryzen Master here to kind of show you what the initial temps are. So you can see our CPU is idling right now, 36, 37C. I can tell you that while installing Ryzen Master and Doom Eternal and Half-Life 2 and Heaven and MSI and I've got CPU ID hardware monitor going, all the driver updates and such, uh, Windows updates that it never got hotter than 60C under full load, which is still 35C below where it would throttle. Remember, this is completely passively cooled. There's no fans, no active cooling whatsoever. So what we've got here to kind of show you temperatures as we go, this is my temperature probe literally just stuck in there for enough time for it to actually heat soak and match the temperature of what's inside the chassis. So you can see the air inside the chassis is 37.7 C. Now we are currently at 67 Fahrenheit inside the room here, which I think is 18.1 C. Hey Siri, what's 67 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? I think you're getting closer every time, 19.4. Okay, so 19.4 C is what we are inside here. So if we take a look at the thermal camera though, you can see 30.4 C. You can see that the hottest part is quite honestly the, the heat sink, exactly like it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's doing a really good job in that clearly the parts that are hottest are the heat sink fins. What's funny though, this side is hotter than this side. Don't know why that is, but it is what it is. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna load up some games, not to see how well the 3400G does. We've already done that video. You guys can go and check that video out if you want. I might remember to link it, I might not. Regardless, if you just do J's two cents space 3400G and search, it'll come up. That's how search bars work. We got a few titles here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at Half-Life 2. This isn't gonna be that impressive to anyone, but the idea here is that if you have this set up as your home theater PC or whatever, you could still play some games on it. Like I said, I still think this is a perfect candidate for the uh, Steam sharing, I really do. Uh, in fact, I plan on trying this when I'm at home. But if we take a look at the 180 FPS, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I know that this game is really easy to run. 211 FPS, 210. It didn't run this good when it was new, that's for sure. Ah, where is it? Ah, 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 it's reloading. I was trying to aim down sight. I forgot this game doesn't have, ah, doesn't have that guy. <laughs> aim down sight. So we take a look here. The GPU is at 54C. CPU is not really being used that hard. That's obvious. Uh, GPU is on a pretty good load though. 100C or 100C, 100%. <laughs> you know, a passively cooled computer though that you can do any sort of gaming on is not common. And then, yeah, so we are at 41.2 on that heat sink. 42.7. 
Yeah, about 50C, 49C, the heat pipe. Okay, but that's fine. Jay, you're playing a game from 2004, whatever it was. Let's uh, see what happens if we try to play something a little more modern. So how about we give it a shot at some Doom Eternal. This is undoubtedly harder to run than the original Doom 2016. So we're currently at uh, 1080p. Vertical sync is set to adaptive. Uh, and then we are at medium preset. One of the things we're looking at here is I'm trying to get this number closer to two uh, gigabytes because that is the amount of dedicated system memory for the GPU. And then it does have shared memory, which is nine gigs or seven gigs available to it, which is why it sees nine gigs total for the VRAM because an APU has dedicated RAM and then it can also share and trade with the system RAM. Uh, we want to avoid that though, because when it has to trade off with system RAM, there's a little bit more latency involved there. Not as bad with an APU versus a GPU trading off with system RAM with true VRAM, but in, you know, we just want to make that closer to what our actual hardware specs are allowing us here. I, I have to look at it this way. This would be more of a media streaming type PC that is capable of playing games. I mean, I'm an FPS knob just like the next guy. And I look at it this way. I'm playing the game right now and I'm not having a terrible time with it. I mean, sure, it's not gonna be the de dedicated graphics card type performance, but this isn't a 3400G review. This is a, whatever this case is called review. Look at this, I'm getting the job done here. It's staying right around 50 FPS, which to me is very gameable. Gameable? Yeah, gameable, it's very gameable, very playable. Case looks like it stopped climbing right around 46C and just dropped a 45.9. Remember, we don't have any sort of airflow happening over this. It's warm for damn sure. This is actually doing better than I, whoa. Was, uh. Ah. I'm gonna die because I did something stupid. Give me health, I'm only at five health. Oh, that's why. I don't have a chainsaw, nope. This is bad. Oh. So let's go ahead and talk about this case real quick. It's some things you need to know if you're considering getting this case. So the Akasa small form factor case, I don't know if it actually has a name. I already read the part number earlier in this video. I like the sound that makes. Cause it just resonates through the fins. Anyway, this is not a small, a small form factor. This is not a small form factor gaming PC. It should not be looked at as such. Any any case that, re, that, that limits you from being able to use any sort of discrete GPU is not a gaming case. However, we're just lucky that uh, AMD happens to have an APU that allows us to play modern games at FPS that I think is reasonable. On a passively cooled chassis with no moving parts whatsoever in this, this is a solid state, the hard, the, the hard drive has no spinning platter. It is uh, obviously no fans anywhere in this helping exhaust air or nothing, means that we had a really good experience that was 100% silent. There wasn't even any sort of coil wine in this because again, the power supply is here. I think this would look really good in a home theater uh, setup. Like I said, I plan on using it to do uh, uh, Steam sharing so that I can do gaming in another room without having to actually have a gaming PC there. I think it will look really good in any cabinet. Phil thinks it looks like an old school uh, head headphone amp, which, you know, like a big tube amp or something like that. It gets as warm as one, I'll tell you that much, depending on the hardware that's in there. When you're doing normal competing stuff, like browsing the internet, going to YouTube or whatever, it's, it doesn't get that warm. We showed you the worst case scenario. And what we did not see was any sort of throttling. Now, sure, you guys might be like, well, you didn't game that long. Remember, we do things longer than what you actually see. So we had about a solid 30 minutes of load right there. And we saw the temperatures really start to taper off. Um, but what's important to know before that is we gamed on this before starting that clip as well. So it probably has more like 45 minutes to an hour worth of gaming on it. So it's it's actually doing really, really well. The heat pipe design clearly is bringing heat to the heat sinks uh, on the sides of the chassis, uh, allowing them to do their job. Things you need to consider though. One, the cables are far too short for the USB 2.0 and USB 3.0 and almost too short for the front panel connectors. Uh, I don't think that would have been that hard for them to add just a few centimeters of length which would have been more than enough. The USB 2.0, I could get it like right over the pins, but then it won't go down because it can't make the turn because it's literally one centimeter too short for this motherboard. Now, ITX motherboards are not created equal. The, the locations of stuff, although has become a little bit more standardized now in 2020, back in like 2017, when this board came out, things were still kind of 
plopped on the motherboard wherever they could find room for it. But then you may or may not have noticed I had to take the heat pipes out again and rearrange them because one thing that they don't even mention in the manual at all is that you need to be mindful of where the location of the 24 pin header is on the motherboard. Otherwise you might be routing a pipe right over it. Fortunately, uh, it was able to clear in this after I just rearranged some pipes that way it can make the bend around the tall riser that you get for the little power connector plug in there um, to get it working. My biggest complaint, honestly, is the fact that you can't use the front hookups, at least with this particular motherboard. Other motherboards you might be allowed to. And a lot of motherboards have start, started putting those headers like more in the center of the board rather than the perimeter. And so I used to complain like, why would you put this in the center? But now I get it, right? Some cases don't allow you enough link to plug certain things in. I don't plug things in the front of my computer anyway. I never use front side USB, so that wouldn't particularly bother me. It might bother you though. Um, there is also no front side audio you might notice on this. Could you put a down fire small form factor cooler in this? Yes, you could. And I feel like you could easily mod this and then actively cool it, and then it just looks cool with these fins on the side. But I feel like that's a lot of effort to go through on a case that really is designed to sit on a shelf and look great. Speaking of which, if you're gonna be putting it in any sort of an AV rack, make sure it's a ventilated one, because if you sit, if you sit this on a rack with other hot components nearby, and you're not getting adequate ventilation, then the temps that you just saw are gonna be even higher in your situation, especially if you have a cabinet door that's closed. I know a lot of high-end AV racks, anyone that would consider building anything for like, you know, true audiophile type grade stuff, usually the racks are ventilated and they have some sort of fans intake and out, outtake, I hate when people say that, intake and exhaust, um, but that's just something to keep in mind. I think this is gonna be a great addition to my man cave that you guys saw me build earlier this year. I've been talking about doing a small form factor home theater PC, but it doesn't need to be a gaming one because of the fact that um, I have the gaming rig in that same room. But I also, being the PC enthusiast that I am, although I do have an LG OLED TV that has WebOS built into it, would still like to be able to have a computer hooked up to it as well where somebody could sit down and play Half-Life 2 that's never played it before or any sort of uh, other title that's not incredibly demanding. So there you go. That was our review of the Acasa case. I think that's how you pronounce it. And they're very limited from what I understand. I don't know much about them. It was just kind of like, hey, you probably want to take a look at this. And I was like, I, look, I like looking at things people tell me to look at. I, I will try and put a link down below. I really have very limited information about this. I don't know the price or any of that. I just saw it. I was like, a case that's the cooler. I know that people have done it before, but I decided to take a look at something that's literally too small for me to even put my shoes in. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. And if you think there's a chassis out there that we should take a look at that's just really different and weird, comment it down below. <gasps>